Hi guys, welcome to another Cook Along with me, Adam from Young Shrewsbury. Uh, Merry Christmas, this is going to be our last one of the year. Uh, so we thought we'd go out with a bit of a bang and do a Christmas dinner. Uh, we're not going to do turkey because, well, turkeys are massive for starters and at the moment we're not allowed to be seeing anybody. <laughs> so uh, it makes sense to just do a chicken I think. Um, and they're also a lot cheaper, a lot easier to get hold of, take a lot less time to cook. And actually, I think they're tastier. I'm not really a fan of turkey. So I'm going to show you how to make a wicked turkey, well, Christmas dinner, sorry, a chicken Christmas dinner. We're going to do some pigs in blankets. We're going to cook them inside a homemade Yorkshire pudding, which is going to blow your minds. I'm going to show you how to make your own gravy from scratch. And we're going to do a little bit of veg and some awesome roasties and parsnips as well. All right, so... First of all, it's all about timing, making a Christmas dinner. You, you kind of got to get, you got, you know, you need to get a lot of things in the oven. You need to think about your space and time and stuff. So the best thing to do is to get your turkey or your chicken cooked first, right? Because that can rest and it can almost go cold. And the longer you rest it, it actually the better and more juicy it's going to be when you come to serve it, right? And you can let it go cold because we're going to make that piping hot gravy. It's going to go over the top, which warms everything up anyway. So don't worry about your turkey going or your chicken going cold. But this is how I want you to make it, right? So, I'm going to take two carrots, first of all. And you can leave the tops and bottoms on. Don't bother skinning them. Just chop them up into fairly small discs, which we're going to lay out along a baking tray, okay? So, we're almost going to make a little bit of a bed of vegetables for this chicken to go on to. I'm going to put my carrots in there, right? And then we're also going to get a couple of onions as well. Now, again... You don't need to be, be really rough with these, so I'm just going to take the top and bottom off, halve them, quarter them, and the quarters will be plenty, all right? Just take the skin off. Well, you know what? You don't even need to take the skin off because you're not, you'll are not. you see later on, we're not actually going to be eating any of this veg. It's all there for the flavour of the gravy. So you could take the skins off or leave them on. I'm going to do half and half just to prove to you I'm not joking when I say you can leave the skins on. It really isn't going to matter. It's going to save... Some time as well okay so I'm just gonna cut those into quarters skin on not gonna hurt at all in the pan all right and then also we have a whole bulb of garlic here again you know if I wanted to peel that it'd take forever I'm not gonna do that I'm literally gonna chop the thing in half across the middle okay so we're gonna release all those flavors and then you'll get that in the pan you'll see Jamie Oliver doing this all the time for his gravy yeah and it, may, it just means all those juices are gonna release and we're going to end up with some wicked flavour in the bottom of here, all right? So once you've got your pan, I'm going to move those bits out of the way. With all your veg, you've got your bed of veg like that in the bottom, okay? Spread it around a bit. So you're going to take your bird, and we're going to pop the bird on top of most of the veg. There'll be a bit of veg poking out either side. That isn't a too much of a problem, okay? And then I'm going to take some oil, some cooking oil. Now I haven't opened this one, so bear with me, okay? So, I'm going to just drizzle some oil over that, and that's just going to help the um, salt and pepper and the herbs stick to it, okay? The next thing is a good bit of salt. Now, you'll notice I'm not rubbing the chicken yet because I don't want to get my hands in the salt or on to the things that once they've been touching the chicken. So, I'm just going to put a good pinch of salt, like probably a tablespoon of salt. Remember, it's only going to be on the skin of the chicken. So it might look like a lot of salt there, but a lot of this is going to fall off and there's no salt underneath, yeah, or in the skin, underneath the skin. So you're only going to get a fraction of the flavour of the salt actually coming through. So plenty of salt, don't be shy. It's going to help it crisp up and well. Crispy chicken skin is the bomb, I love it. Right, and then we're going to go for some pepper. I've got white pepper here just because I've run out of black pepper, but that's fine. White pepper works really well with, ch with uh, chicken, so does black pepper. So if you've got black pepper, use that. All right, and then I've just got some thyme here. You could use mixed herbs, any dried herbs would be great, just to add a little bit more flavor. So we're gonna add that all over the top. And if you get a few extras over the sides, it isn't gonna hurt because it's gonna, gonna go into your gravy. All right, and then this is where we're now gonna touch this. I'm just gonna rub all of that in, making sure that all that chicken is coated with the seasoning and the salt, okay? Now you're probably going to move things around a bit and find it all your veg. If you get your hands in your veg now as well, make sure that some of that oil is coating all the veg because that's going to mean 
that when it's in the oven cooking, it's going to roast and it's going to caramelise. And the darker it gets, the better your gravy is going to be at the end, all right? So get all that, pick your chicken up, get all the veg covered in the seasoning and the oil and everything, all right? And then just chuck your chicken back on top of there. You can do exactly the same as this with your turkey, if you wanted to. Your time's going to take longer. Now, I'm not going to tell you how long to cook this because you might have a different size bird to me, all right? So check the packet, it should give you some directions on sort of rough times. But one thing you just need to check is that when you think it's done, if you po poke it with a skewer or a knife, looking at the juices, if the juice, juices are running nice and clear, then there's a good chance that it's cooked, okay? If you've got a thermometer, even better, you're looking at at least 72 degrees C inside. A lot of you probably won't have though. So just don't be scared, scared to check it for the juices to run clear before you serve it. And also check the packet and work out the weight of your bird to make sure that it cooks right. I reckon this one's gonna take about an hour. I've got it in the oven on for 200 now. So I'm gonna get this in the oven and then we're gonna move on to getting the uh, pigs in blankets and the Yorkshire pudding batter ready. All right, let's go. Okay guys, so next I'm gonna show you how to make these pigs in blankets, Yorkshire pudding, toad in the hole, whatever you want to call it. But this is a great way of doing your pigs and blankets and your Yorkshire pudding all at once without taking up too much space in your oven. So, first things first is make your pigs and blankets. So basically, very simply, get your sausages, okay? Wrap them in bacon. So we've got some lovely bacon here. Just gonna get rid of these bits. Uh, and you're just gonna take streaky bacon's the one, nice and thin, okay? You're just gonna take one piece of bacon for, per sausage. And it's so easy. People buy pigs in blankets, but you don't need to. So you just take your bacon and your sausage and just wrap it over. Wrap it around like that. One, that's one done. Okay, pop one in there. And we're gonna put, pop them into a tray. And this is what they're gonna cook in before we put our Yorkshire pudding batter in. So I'm gonna keep making these. You get the idea, so just wrap them up. It takes two seconds to make amazing pigs and blankets. Because they often use like skinny little sausages, you know, in the supermarket if you buy them pre-made and they don't really taste of anything. This, you know you're gonna have this when you get this in your mouth. It's a proper pig and blanket, that. Right, so keep wrapping them up. I always make my own. If you've got a few sage leaves knocking about, you can always put a sage leaf underneath the bacon. That's always a nice little touch. I like that. I haven't got any today, so I'm not gonna bother. But if you've got some in your garden, or if you're close to the Grange, you can run up to the Grange and use some of out of our herb garden. It's still growing, if you know what sage looks like. If it doesn't, use Google. Google's your friend. Okay? You know where the herb garden is. Right, last one. So that is that. Obviously, you can't have pigs in blankets without stuffing either. And I love my stuffing also wrapped in bacon. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm also going to show you how to do that. So... I've just got some normal stuffing mix because it's easy, okay? You can make your own stuffing, but that will be a long process and lots more ingredients to worry about. This is like 30p in Aldi, so it's an absolute bargain. Just gonna, we'll just open the packet. So we're gonna get this made up now, and then we'll come back to it because we pour the whole packet into a bowl, and it literally is just a case of, I boiled a kettle earlier, 450 ml of water, I'm just guessing is about that-ish. Yeah, I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to use this end of the spoon because I haven't got another spoon with me and I need to use this for something else in a minute. So just mix that stuffing up with the water and forget about it for five minutes. We'll come back to that, okay? Don't make it too sloppy though because we need to make these into stuffing balls, okay? Which are going to be wrapped in bacon. So mix up your stuffing mix. That easy. Boom. Done. Now for the Yorkshire puddings. So, 100 grams of plain flour. If you're using the ingredients being dropped off, you've got 150 grams of flour there because you're gonna need 50 grams for your gravy. So don't just put all of your flour into the bowl, weigh it out. Or if you haven't got weighing scales, roughly, you need two thirds of it in the bowl, save one third of it for later, all right? So 100 grams of flour, big pinch of salt. Don't be shy with the salt, it's gonna make it good. It's Christmas, yeah? All right, two eggs. One, into the flour, and two. Now I like to, at this stage, just start to mix that up a little bit, okay? So mix the eggs into the flour, there we go. And I'm just, this is like my great-grandmother 
used to make the Yorkshire pudding every single Sunday and she always just used a spoon. So people to use whisks and all the rest of it, you don't need to, right? So you'll see that that started to come into a bit of a paste, right? That means that hopefully, now by adding a bit of water at a time, sorry, a bit of water, a bit of milk, so you need 100 mils of milk, it's not a lot of milk, 100 mils. 100 mils of milk, 100 grams of flour, two eggs, salt, that's all you need, okay? We're gonna put in like a third of that milk and then slowly try to try and mix the milk into the paste that we've got and it'll just start to loosen. Now don't add any more until it's all kind of mixed in and you've got a thicker, sorry, thinner paste than you had before. Because that is the way we're gonna make sure there's no lumps in this. All right, so I'm just gonna work that quite hard. Excellent, right. Add another third of your milk, mix again. And what we're looking for is something that resembles a milkshake consistency, okay? It needs to be not too thick, it should easily pour out of the bowl, but not as thin as milk, obviously. So hopefully, I can just show you, so that's two thirds of it now, there's no lumps in that because I've added it bit by bit. Okay, last bit in now, final mix. So if we can see in the camera, this is like a thick milkshake, there we go, like that, okay. Now the best thing you can possibly do to make a decent, decent Yorkshire pudding is to get that nice and cold now. So get that in the fridge for like a good 20 minutes. And what you can do is start your um, pigs and blankets off. So whilst this is chilling in the fridge, get this in the oven, okay? 200 degrees as well, you can go in at the back end of your chicken, that's not a problem. Start browning those off, okay? In fact, one thing I will say is you do need plenty of oil for a Yorkshire pudding to work. So I'd say about a tablespoon and a half of oil in there before you put it in the oven. Okay, cooking oil. I'm gonna get this pan nice and hot. It's important that you get an adult to help you with this bit when it comes out because it is gonna be mega hot, all right? You get some decent amount of oil in the bottom of your pan. Put that to one side. Now finally, before I take all that off to the oven, I'm just gonna get my stuffing balls done. So. Hopefully, oh, it's a little bit warm to touch, so just be careful. I'm just gonna take balls, like you might wanna leave it to be a bit cooler than this. I've got asbestos hands. So I tend to make sort of golf ball sized stuffing balls here. Okay, so I'm just gonna make those up. Woo, it's hot. Definitely don't do it this quick, because I'm burning my hands, okay? Give it a rest. I'm just trying to get everything done in one go. To get these stuffing balls made. You might get 10 out of it, perhaps, out of a packet. And if you do, and you've got a 16 pack of bacon like I have here, that's absolutely perfect, because you get one piece of bacon around each one. So I'm just gonna make the rest of these up very quickly. Keep going. So they can be quite rough. Don't pack them too hard, because otherwise your stuffing is gonna be like bullets. Okay, and it's going to be really tough, you don't want that. So just loosely pack the balls together. Okay, you could make, make them sort of just with warm water from the tap, I think. That's probably safer than using boiling water. Or you just let it cool a bit longer than I have, because this is quite hot on my hands. It's not bur quite burning me. It's not a million miles away. Actually, I only made eight stuffing balls, so that's fine. Not a problem. And then all you need to do is these can just be prepared for later on. So when, probably when your chicken comes out, you can put these in. These are gonna take half an hour. Just wrap them with stuffing, sorry, wrap them with bacon. And again, pop those, whoops, into a tray. If you put the, the bacon side down, then that will kind of act as a little bit of a non-stick really, because the fat will come out of it. And it will stop, yeah, it will just, it will just stop it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. So I'm just gonna wrap these up. Or you can cook these now, and if you don't mind warming them through later on, get it all out of the way. The good thing about Christmas dinner is you can kind of do it in stages, and the more you prepare, the less work there is to do at the end, yeah? So we're just gonna wrap this one, oops. That's four, four more to go. 
really, really easy. Just wrap it around. Now you notice how I'm having the stuffing poking out either side. You don't want it to be completely coated. And then you get a nice crunchy bit of stuffing wrapped in a lovely bit of bacon. Crunchy bits on the outside, soft in the middle is what we're going for. Six. Another one. Seven. And finally, number eight. Right, so brilliant. So just to recap, you need to get your batter in the fridge. You need to get these with the oil into the oven now. And then these are prepared to probably go in just as your chicken comes out while we're doing the veg and everything. They'll take maybe 20 minutes, all right? But they're prepared now, all right? Good. So now I'm gonna show you how to make really, really great roast potatoes and roast parsnips if you like them, the parsnips if you like those as well. All you need to do is take your potatoes, peel them, and part boil them for five minutes, drain them, and put them in a pan like this. So I've done all of that before you because I didn't think you really wanted to watch me boiling potatoes or peeling them, okay? So what you basically get when you boil them is they'll still be hard, so they're not cooked all the way through, but the edges, as you'll see, are quite fluffy, all right? And that's gonna make super crispy potatoes. So all you need to do now, is take about a tablespoon of oil, into plug them all over, a good pinch of salt, and the salt is really important. If you put some salt in the water when you boil them as well, that actually helps to crisp the potatoes. But another pinch of salt there, some pepper, and also some herbs. And then put the lid on, hold the lid down, and shake, okay? You can make a real good shake like that. And this is why you don't want to boil the potatoes too much because they'll fall apart. But what you end up with is really nicely coated, slightly fluffy edged potatoes and parsnips. As you can see there. All right? And then literally all you need to do is pour them out into a baking tray. You might need two baking trays because what you don't want is to load these up and everything to be overlapping because then it won't crisp up, all right? So you need to use two trays and that's cool, okay? Or one big one, if you've got a big baking tray at home, that'd be great. Get them in a nice hot oven. They're gonna take about 40 minutes, something like that, but that's, you, your chicken could be resting while these go in, all right? So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I'm gonna shortly show you how to do your roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings. Right. Now for the pig in blanket turned in the hole. So I've just pulled these out of the oven. The oil is really hot, okay, and that's really important. You need to put this cold batter out of the fridge into the oil now and just pour it all around the tray, trying to leave the uh, sausages fairly uncovered, okay? So we get that lovely batter all around them, or the pigs in blanket, sorry. This is a pig in blanket toad in the hole, okay? And then get that straight back into a screaming hot oven. You want it around about 200, 220, and they'll take about 30 minutes. Okay, so get that straight back in the oven. There'll be lots of fat in there, that's fine. Right then, so now that we have our chicken roasted, I'm gonna show you how to make this amazing gravy I told you about. So, chicken has been resting now for a little while. So I'm just gonna remove that from the pan. Okay, Oh, some loads of juices. Pull the juices out, that's fine. Try not to burn yourself. Luckily the chicken's quite cool. As I said to you, you can have the chicken sitting around for quite some time. The, this gravy is gonna warm it up, all right? Now you can do this one or two ways. If you've got a gas hob, you could do this just in the pan, which is probably the best way to do it. I don't have a gas hob here today, I'm gonna to have to use this induction. So I'm gonna just, what I'm gonna do is scrape all of the juices and every last little bit off that pan, all of the carrots and the onions and those bits of garlic are gonna go into this saucepan. Okay, so now we've got all of the um, uh, the pits out of the pan, all the vegetables out of the pan into uh, the saucepan here. We're just gonna turn this on and I'm gonna get it onto medium heat. 
okay, and we're going to start to just get that heated through again. Now, it should be, you'll see there's quite a lot of fat in there because we put that extra oil on the chicken and the fat of the chicken skin will also have started to come out, okay. We want to get that moving. I'm going to go take around two spoons of flour, okay, normal flour. That's the 50 grams you had left over if you've had the delivery. Okay, so two spoons of flour into that and mix it all into the kind of the fat and the juices of that chicken until you get what we call a paste or it's known in the hotel industry or in the catering industry as a roux. Okay, so just for a minute or two, I want you to cook through that. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I'm going to cook the flour into the juices and the fat that was in that pan, okay? And it's all going to look a little bit nasty, I'm going to show you, a little bit rough, and you'll be looking at it and you'll be thinking, what on earth is this? How is this going to be gravy? Well, you need to make sure you've made up around about a pint and a half of chicken stock. So those of you who have delivery, you've got your chicken stock cubes, just add some hot water, okay? And all we're going to do now is I'm just going to put a little drop at a time. Now you notice I didn't put very much in there. If you put too much in at once, you're going to find that you're going to end up with lumps, okay? So you're going to put a little bit in at a time, stir it, and once it all becomes smooth and a little bit looser than it was before, a little bit like when you made the Yorkshire pudding batter, okay? You're going to add in a bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more. So there's a bit another drop there, okay? So we're going to, and we're going to do it to the point where this sauce, this gravy, is actually quite thin, and a little bit, probably a bit more liquidy than you guys want. I'll show you. So we're going to keep stirring now. So this is the, where we're at now. So it's still a paste, all right? So we're going to go for another splash and mix. All right? Mix it round, mix it round, mix it round. We're getting all the flavour out of the, the, the roasting pan here. It's going to be super, super tasty gravy. All right, and then, so it's getting even thinner now. It's starting to drop like very thick gravy now, all right? But we're gonna go thinner than that. So mix it round again. All right. So it's now getting to this consistency, very soft. This is really is like thick gravy now. And as it gets a bit thinner, or a bit, and a bit looser, a bit more like a liquid, you can add in more. So I'm gonna go for half of that now, okay, the stock. And all of a sudden, you're going to have like lumpy gravy and the lumps are basically all of those bits of onion and, and carrot that have been knocking around in there giving it all the flavour. So all we need to do now is add the last bit of that, that liquid and now you should have quite thin gravy and if you haven't then just add a bit more stock or even a bit of water okay but it should be quite easy for you to then pour into strainer. So uh, this is like a cylindrical strainer, you can use a sieve or anything, a colander. Okay, and what we're going to do now is just take that gravy that's in here, we're just going to pour it into the colander. And again, get the pan back on the heat. And then I'm just going to quickly work with a spoon, push all that gravy through the colander, like that. push it at the back of the spoon, get every last bit of flavour out of these vegetables and in that pan, sorry, in that jug underneath we have got an absolutely banging chicken gravy, right, that easy, using all the juices, put that to one side, we're going to get that back in the pan and basically all you do need to do now is keep that ticking and keep it warm until we've got everything else ready and that's it, boil yourself some vegetables, I'm going to have carrots, I'm going to have some sprouts and we're going to have some broccoli. You have whatever you like. I'm not going to teach you to boil vegetables. Put them in hot water, a bit of salt, 10 minutes, done. Yeah? Don't need to show you that. And then we're going to bring everything back together and plate up. And that's it. Your Christmas dinner's done. It's so easy. Impression mum and dad. Right then, here we are. So we've got everything ready. We've got our lovely roast chicken. Looking pretty damn good there. We also have this, our... This is really quite special. This is our pig in blanket toad in the hole. Check that out, how good does that look? So much better than a normal Yorkshire pudding. Okay, we've got our lovely 
little uh, stuffing balls wrapped in bacon. My daughter in the background really, really can't wait to eat this. Uh, we've got our roast parsnips and potatoes. Yeah, turn them over once halfway through the cooking. They're really crispy and delicious. I told you I was not going to show you, but I boiled some veg and some, well, yeah, some carrots, some Brussels sprouts, obviously, and some broccoli. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull all this together. I'm just going to slice off a couple of bits of turkey breast, chicken breast, sorry. Could be turkey if you guys are making turkey. I'm doing chicken. It's tastier and cheaper. So, a couple of slices of the breast. If you like the leg, go for it. I like the breast. So I'm just going to slice off three bits there, straight down. You can break all this chicken down beforehand if you wanted to. Okay, so three slices of chicken. Going to definitely get a big chunk of this pig in blanket Yorkshire pudding out of the packet, or out of the packet, out of the, uh, the tip. So just going to get the knife underneath that. Might need a little bit of persuasion. Help it along. I'm going to lift that out as one piece, hopefully. There we go. Awesome. I love these stuffing balls, so I'm having two stuffing balls. I'm going to go in with the parsnips. Two parsnips. Excuse my hands, I'm going to be eating this, it doesn't really matter. A couple of roast potatoes. I probably should use my spoon for the veg, but again, in my house, I've forgotten one. I'm just going to quickly grab a bit of broccoli, a couple of sprouts, and some carrots. And then, obviously, this gorgeous looking Christmas dinner wouldn't be right without. Our uh, awesome gravy. So I'm just going to pour gravy all over that. And that's me done for the year. So thanks all of you who've been watching, taking part. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy this Christmas dinner. Uh, get stuck in. Give mum the, the day off. You know, give her the afternoon off. Show her that you can do this. It isn't difficult. And we'll see you in the new year. Thanks very much. Peace.